Okay, so now um, I want to go to the second example in which we um, saw a PDE using these uh, complex Fourier transforms and the method uh, for integral transforms that we discussed before. Okay, so PDE example. Consider a general one dimensional diffusion equation as this partial u over partial t minus alpha. partial square u over partial x square equals to a general function of g, x, and t, where x is between minus infinity and infinity, and t is greater than zero. With the given initial condition, of u at x and 0 times 0 is fx, a general function of x, and the boundary condition of u and partial u over partial x go to 0 as x goes to plus and minus infinity. So this is a given uh, general 1D diffusion equation with this initial and boundary condition. And the problem ask, asks us to solve this PDE using complex Fourier transform. Okay. So let's get started and see how we are going to do that uh, for uh, this type of problems. So the first thing you want to do here is when you want to solve it, uh, sorry for that, when you want to solve it for uh, this kind of uh, PDEs with complex uh, Fourier transform approach is that you take the Fourier transform FT of both sides of the equation. So first, you take the Fourier transform of both sides. So let's do that. So the Fourier transform of uh, the first one is going to be the integral from minus infinity to infinity of partial u over partial t of e to the i beta x dx minus alpha and for this one I'm going to write it this way the Fourier transform of uh, partial square u over partial x square equals to the second one uh, is going to be again Fourier transform of g Okay, so the Fourier transform of G, I'm going to just write it as, uh, so, let me first write the definition, uh, definition of that, GXT is very simple, similar to that, 
So this is, I'm gonna write it as the Fourier transform of G, X and T, which is gonna be G hat, right? Of beta and T. Okay. So this one is gonna be, you can take the uh, time derivative out of this and then you are gonna get the partial derivative of u hat in the beta space, frequency space, at, uh, with, uh, with respect, uh, the partial derivative of u with respect to time, but u hat, right, in the, the, in the um, beta space. And as you remember, as you might remember, for this one, I can write minus alpha, and for the uh, Fourier transform of part, uh, the derivative, if you remember one of the properties of Fourier transform was that we could use this formula for that. So let me just write it down for uh, uh, Fourier transform, the formula. So, <clears throat> Let me do it here. So let's do it here, or let me just, okay. So a property of Fourier transform that we uh, learned for uh, derivatives it says that the Fourier transform of the second derivative of a function is gonna be minus I beta square the Fourier transform of that function okay so if I apply it here the Fourier transform of square u mm, partial square u time over partial x square is gonna be minus i beta square which is gonna be i square i square is my is uh, negative so it's gonna be minus beta square the Fourier transform of u which is u hat okay so simply this term is gonna be minus minus beta alpha beta square u okay so let me just uh, write this down so this is going to give me partial u hat over t plus alpha beta square u hat equals to g hat of beta and t okay a u hat is in um, a u hat is in the beta space okay so and also let me uh, we need to uh, also do the Fourier transform for the uh, initial condition. So for the initial condition, and just note that this property is valid only when we have these boundary conditions. So the boundary conditions that u and partial u over partial x go to zero as x goes to plus and minus infinity. So this property only val is valid for this condition which holds here, the boundary conditions. And for the initial condition, uh, the, uh, we have to also transform the initial condition. So for the initial condition, if you transform it into the Fourier space, ux and zero is gonna be transformed to u hat beta and zero, okay? So I'm just gonna write it here, u hat and beta and zero equals to f hat of beta instead of fx we have f hat okay so this is the transformed transformed p 
PDE. So we have transformed the uh, original PDE from the regular X space into the um, frequency beta space. And you see the simplicity of this. The simplicity that this uh, approach brings us is in this derivative, right? We have, div we have converted the uh, second order X derivative to just a multiplication in the beta space, right? So this is why we are using complex uh, Fourier transforms because they are gonna simplify all the PDEs, especially the uh, X derivatives, the, high, uh, the derivatives in those equations, okay? So now you see this has been converted to an ODE, right? From that PDE, partial differential equation, we only have ordinary differential equation, the, the only term is here the partial over partial t okay so we have simply can solve this so solve this ode by integration so we can solve this by integration So what we are going to get is u hat of beta and t is going to be e to the minus. So you can do it with uh, first find the uh, answer for general solution. For general solution, it's just a reminder. Uh, so for general solution, what you do is you first solve this for the homogeneous case, alpha beta square u equals to zero. Okay. And then, so the, uh, the homogeneous case is going to be this minus uh, alpha beta square t. And by applying the uh, initial condition, it's going to, you have to multiply it by f hat beta. Right? You can just say, uh, check it. So if you take the first derivative of this, it's going to be minus alpha beta square times uh, f beta and then plus uh, you can just plus it alpha beta square of that and then that becomes zero okay and also it satisfies the initial condition at t equals to zero this is going to be one and so at t equals to zero is going to be f beta which satisfies the initial condition okay so this is the general uh, solution and then you plus that you add the, the particular solution by just solving, by finding one solution that satisfies this g hat, beta, and t, right? This is just a reminder for solving ODEs. So it's gonna be from uh, in the integral from zero to t, this is only one particular solution for that alpha beta square t prime of g hat beta t prime d theta prime. So this depends on the function uh, that we have g hat so here is a general uh, solution that you can just take a note that how you can do that so you just take the integral of this and then you are going to get the general the particular solution for uh, uh, this type of equation so for example if your g is zero this is going to be all zero right uh, so you are just solving for a homogeneous solution but if it is one, then you 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 need to just uh, put it here one, and then uh, not here, like in, in the in the G, because this is G hat. Uh, then you will solve this equation, uh, this integral, and then put it here. So this will be your uh, full solution. Okay, so but still this solution is in the beta space, right? So you have beta space, and we wanted to solution. We wanted the solution here in the x space, in the regular space. We are interested in that. So the last step is that we use inversion. Use the inversion formula. to take back the solution into 
their regular x space. Right? So we need to use the uh, inversion formula for that. So the inversion formula u x and t for u hat is like this. So it's going to be 1 over 2 pi the integral of minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus i beta x times u hat beta and t d beta. So we just put the uh, substitute the solution here in the beta space into this uh, integral. And then take the integral, inverse integral, to take back the solution to the regular space. Okay, so let's do that. It's going to be 1 over 2 pi beta from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus i beta x. Okay, and then instead of u hat, I'm just going to substitute the solution we found. It's going to be e to the minus alpha beta squared t. I'm just substituting from here. times instead of f hat beta i'm just going to write its definition which is going to be x prime from minus infinity to infinity of f x prime e to the i beta x prime d x prime and then i'm going to plus add e to the minus Uh, alpha beta square t so I just uh, close this bracket here and for the new bracket it's for the integral the integral we have inside which is going to be integral from 0 to t of e to the alpha beta square t prime instead of g hat i'm gonna just write the definition it's gonna be integral x prime from minus infinity to infinity of g x prime t prime e to the i beta x prime d x prime d t prime and then close this and then the whole thing is gonna be d beta prime d beta sorry okay so this is the uh, expansion of the solution that we found and then i just reorder these integrals so reorder integrals so i'm gonna get one over two pi the integral First, I'm going to put x. So I'm going to take x out. Okay. This is for uh, the first term. So I'm going to first uh, separate these two. So separate these two terms. So this one and this one, I'm going to separate them. And then for the first one, for the first integral, I'm going to first uh, uh, take the integral for the x. So it's going to be fx prime, and then we have the integral of beta from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus alpha beta square t minus, I'm going to just combine the uh, all the uh, exponentials, so minus i beta x minus x prime then we have here d beta the first integral i close it and then we have the second one which is the x prime okay so this is just uh <clears throat> this term here i just re rearranged it and then put it here okay so this is just that and then the second one, the second one, I'm going to add that as 1 over 2 pi. So this, this one multiplied by 
this, right? So these two, I'm going to just write it down here. So 1 over 2 pi of uh, 0 to t, the integral of x prime minus infinity to infinity of g prime, g x prime, t prime. And then in, inside we have the integral from of beta from minus infinity. So you take the beta inside. And then I just write the exponentials, all the exponentials here, e to the minus alpha beta square t minus t prime minus i beta x minus x prime. And the whole thing is d beta. And then we have d x prime d t prime. Okay. So this is just uh, when we reorder the integrals, we're going to get this. And then here I want to uh, give you a, a known integral formula that you can uh, search it and see the proof of that. But this is a uh, pretty well known. So one over two pi, the integral of that from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus alpha beta square t minus i beta x. This is going to be d beta. This has the solution of e to the minus x square over 4a 4 alpha t over 2 square root of pi alpha t. Okay, so this is a formula that uh, is known and you can, you can, you can find it, that you can find it and prove it. So I'm not gonna do that here. So I'm just gonna use this uh, as a known factor as known. So let me do so this is a known formula. Okay, so by knowing this formula, I can just substitute this back into uh, my original equations and find um, the solution of those okay so for example let's say for this one what we are gonna do and also for this one i'm just gonna substitute back from this and just uh, write the final solutions okay so u of x and t equals to so for the first one uh, we have this So let me just quickly write it down here, what it's going to be. So let's see if we have this. This is going to give me e to the minus Instead of x, I have to write x minus x prime. So I'm going to write x minus x prime square over 4 alpha t over 2 square root of pi alpha t. Okay. And because the integral, the other integral is with x prime. So it doesn't have any t and I can take t out, t out of the integral, the whole integral. So I'm going to get 1 over... 2 pi 
times uh, square root of uh, 2 alpha pi t. Right? And this is for when you have 2 pi, right? So, uh, so we have a 2 pi here. So it's going to be 1 over 2 square pi alpha t. I'm just taking out here this one. Multiplied by x prime from minus infinity to infinity of fx prime. And then we have e to the minus x minus x prime square over 4 alpha t dx prime. Okay, so this is the first one. And for the second one, I can do that similarly. So I'm going to get the integral from 0 to t. And now we have t here too. So I, I, I will only, I can only take it out of the second integral, not the first one. So I have the integral from 0 to t of 1 over 2 square root of pi alpha. Instead of t here, I have t minus t prime, right? So if you look at it here, you have t minus t prime. So I just have to write t minus t prime instead of t. So t minus t prime. And then integral from x prime minus infinity to infinity of g x prime t prime. And then we have e to the minus x minus x prime square over 4 alpha t minus t prime. And then we have dx prime dt prime. Okay, it's just from here. Okay, so this is the final solution in the x space. And this is what we really thought. We really, uh, we were seeking this solution, okay? So let me just do this. This is the final solution. The final solution of this problem uh, by using the complex Fourier transforms. And this is a general solution for any fx and gx t function. Okay, so fx t, let me just uh, write them where what they were. So the solution, the question that we had was partial u over partial t minus alpha partial square u over partial x square equals to g x and t. So for any g x and t, and for any initial condition u x and zero equals to f x. This is a very general form. Okay, you can just find this uh, based on uh, this solution. Okay. So in the next lecture, what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, solve some examples of this. Uh, so we are going to just see some example functions for gx and fx. Then we are going to evaluate these integrals and find the solutions for real world cases. Right? When we have real world uh, problems like uh, fluid in a channel or other things. So I'm going to solve uh, two or three uh, examples of this. But this was the general approach for solving a PDE using um, complex Fourier transforms. Okay, so let's uh, just review what we have done in this lecture. So first, uh, the first thing we did was we gave an example where we calculated the Fourier transform of a, uh, of a specific function. For example, this triangular pulse where was given here, and then we took a Fourier transform of that. 
and then found the uh, final solution as t sinc square beta t over 2 okay and then this is just the function of sinc so you can see you can plot that and see how this um, function which is a triangular pulse uh, in the regular space is represented in the Fourier space or beta space okay and then in the second example, we just show a general approach how we can uh, use complex Fourier transforms to solve any PDE and how it uh, simplifies our uh, solutions, the method. So the first thing we do is we take the Fourier transform of both sides. And the, the nice thing about the Fourier transform is that it converts the uh, derivatives into multiplications. So that uh, second order PDE is converted to an ODE with this formula, alpha beta square u in the Fourier Fourier space in the beta space or frequency space okay so this transform PDE which is now an ODE is uh, can be easily solved by integration for example by assuming a general solution homogeneous solution uh, and a general solution and a particular solution and this is the uh, solution for that and then we have this solution in the beta space, and now we have to take back that solution into the regular space by using inverse formula or inversion formula uh, for the Fourier transforms. And this is the inversion formula for that, for the um, Fourier transforms. And we just substitute the solutions here that we obtained and then uh, we just uh, reorder the integrals into this form and using this integral formula that is known, uh, we just uh, substitute back into the uh, solutions and uh, we simplify, further simplify and rearrange the terms. And this is gonna be our final solution for this PDE. This is a general solution for any function of G, which is kind of, we sometimes call it as a source term, source term. And fx, which is the initial condition, this is the general function, the general solution of this uh, PDE. So as I said in the next, le next lecture, I'm going to uh, substitute these uh, gxt and fx with some uh, simpler uh, tangible functions for you. And then I'm going to solve this uh, um, equation ux and t for those uh, uh, tangible functions and um, obtain the integrals so you can have a better feeling what these um, look like okay thank you very much